My name is Nancy Borowick. I am a documentary photographer and storyteller. My mother was this beautiful, passionate, caring, selfless soul. And my dad was larger than life. He was the center of attention. He was boisterous. He was loud, sometimes inappropriate. Um, but they complemented each other. And I was so lucky to have parents like those. My mother was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1997. After treatment, um, after chemo, radiation, mastectomy, she had clear scans. And, and we were lucky for 12 years. Fast forward the winter of 2012, she was back in treatment, a third recurrence or a second recurrence, third time with breast cancer. Because my mother was sick for so much of my life, it was it was just sort of another item on her to-do list. And we kind of saw it like that too. She really made didn't make a big deal of it. And I get a call one day from my dad asking us if we wanted to go to dinner in New York City and we should go to my favorite restaurant. And I was like, oh, this is very exciting. Um, but a little out of, out of ordinary. We sat down at the restaurant and I could feel and see sort of a somber expression on both of my parents' faces. In that moment, I was sure they were going to tell me that there was nothing more that they could do for my mom's disease. But I was wrong. It was my dad. My dad was always the healthy one. And they said, well, he said, I have stage four terminal pancreatic cancer and I'm dying. When I would go to chemo with my parents, I, I didn't know how to be there with them without you bringing my camera because I, I was worried that I would be a puddle of tears if I, if I wasn't, you know, using my camera and maybe giving myself a little distance from the reality of what was happening. In that moment, I realized that my camera had become this armor that protected me. It allowed me to be there with them without completely falling apart. My father died on December 7th, 2013, which was a year and a day since his diagnosis. My mother, she died 364 days later, which was bizarre, but something about it felt kind of okay. I had never expected to share any of my photographs of my parents or the story of my parents with anyone. It was just sort of a personal journal, but when I did share it with a mentor of mine, she insisted that I that I do share it. So um, I submitted it to a contest <laughs> and I didn't win the contest, but I won something much bigger. I, an email from an editor at the New York Times saying that they wanted to publish my family's story in the biggest newspaper in the world. <laughs> um, I asked my parents, you know, what do you think of this? They said, if this is important to you and important to your career, then absolutely we're on board. We support you, do it. And they were sort of surprised that anyone would care about our family story. And once my story on my family was published, we felt the least alone we've ever felt because people were reaching out from every corner saying, I know cancer. I lost my mother or my sister's in treatment. Uh, my father survived and or I also was a caregiver so thank you for sharing your story because it it made me feel less alone and to feel like this experience you know this complicated experience with my family has helped others in their traumas and their grief in their everything it's bigger than me it's bigger than photography and I'm grateful that um, I was able to, that they allowed me to share their story. Cancer is scary. And I think the most important thing I can really say is that you're not alone. We've come a long way. We have treatments, we have support groups, we have photo essays uh, to show us that we're not alone. And there are a lot of people out there 
who can relate to what you or what your family is going through and to not forget that because that can be such a resource um, before, during, and after. And you know, there's strength and vulnerability.